What you want to do is cut them up way up high. That's where the flavor is. Hey, guys, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? We got Beastly oh, Gamer here. How you doing, Beastly? Man, I'm sick as a dog, man, but I'm here, baby. All right. Well, that's what me. commitment is. Yes. <laughs> It's like it's like a marriage being on Beastly Thoughts. <laughs> Nine to five game. Or, I'm sorry, Cod Made Player. How you doing? Good man. Just sitting here chilling with the boys as all always. Right. Nice. Not too nerdy. What have you been up to all week? I mean, like I felt like my weekend was like a movie. Too bad it was like The Hangover, and I really don't remember too much. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, somebody took pictures. Maybe. Hopefully uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't go to Bangkok, did you? <laughs> no, no. So I you see. went to uh, Atlantic City, is that what I heard? Yes, sir. Oh, man, I remember being single and going to Atlantic City. This weekend I spent uh, printing out projects and hooking up printers for projects. That was fun. Awesome, man. <laughs> you make your daily trip to the Home Depot? No, I went to Staples <laughs> this weekend. Okay. <laughs> nice. So what do we got for this week? We had a lot of exciting news. Yeah, I want to start off by saying something, guys. All right. For all the guys who uh, have gone ex exclusively to the next-gen consoles, I really feel bad for you. There's some really good games out right now. I've been playing South Park, The Stick of Truth. Well, actually, I started playing it, and then my wife took over and just started going crazy on it. I'm playing Castlevania, Lords of Shadow 2. These games, these last-gen consoles still have a lot of life in them, and I feel bad for the guys who can't go back and play these games, man, because... There's a lot of good stuff still potentially in the wind for these last gen consoles. I thought th I thought South Park came out for uh, PS4. Am I wrong? No, nah, it's still it's PS3 P and uh, Xbox 360 and PC. Oh, okay, all right, oh, that's Only too like, bad. I would have liked to see it hit the new ones. And more more likely they'll cash in later on. They'll wait like a little while and bring it out again so they people will buy it again. Yeah, they'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, with a game like that, the graphic style, there's not too much more you can do yeah. as far as an up version because it's South yeah. Park. So it would be basically the same game. Uh, so if they release that at a later date, it's just to piss people off and make you wait. Yeah. You know, for me, it's more. It's less about the uh, graphics and more about the fact that now that the Xbox One and PS4 are hooked up, I just don't want to take the time to drag the old console out of the closet and hook it up. Yeah. So it's... You know, if there's something really compelling that I had to play, and South Park isn't that game for me because I'm not a big fan, but if if there was something that was super compelling, then I would do it. And actually, my PS3 is still hooked up downstairs. The thing is, though, with the uh, South Park, like, I got up for a PC. I just started. First of all, it might be the funniest game I ever played. Like, it's it's just funny. Like, everything about it, there's hidden things around it. It's just, it's just funny. Um, but... Uh, frames per second, it's locked at 30 frames per second for PC. Mm -hmm. They do that on purpose so it looks like it's like the, the TV show, the way oh, they really? move and stuff. <laughs> so it won't let it go any faster. So in reality, for next gen, there's really no purpose of going to next gen yeah. because it's locked at the frame rate and it's going to be the same way. So, But it's funny, though. Yeah. It's definitely fun. That's fair. God made player, what you been playing this week, baby, baby? I uh, just checked out Dead Nation. Uh, I kind of like the game. It kind of reminds me of like the old arcade games you used to play and stuff. Um, it's not bad. Um, the co-op is pretty fun. I think that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, like you're saying, yeah, PS3 is actually getting a really, I mean, a lot of good games coming out for uh, the PlayStation Plus users. I mean, us PS4 users, we're still getting a decent amount. Uh, you know, not the best games, but, you know, they're not too old or, you know, they're not boring and stuff. And, you know, just trying to look up on more news. You know, I think I'm going to start doing comedy skits, you know, comedy montages for Call of Duty Ghosts here eventually. You know, just to change it up a little bit, give people some different stuff, like some bloopers to start trolling people and all that good stuff. Uh, maybe start doing like a uh, drunk cod every Wednesday or something. You know, that's, too <laughs> that's a classic right there. That's classic. I've tried to uh, do that. It is hard to play cod drunk. Like, real yeah, i got to keep one eye closed because, like, <laughs> you know, they shoot everything, so I gotta keep one eye closed. So, but yeah, that's wanna, basically what I'm trying to do. I want to ask you a question, uh, Kyle. Now you've been playing Dead Nation. I know that Not Too Nerdy played as well. You play with nine to five too, right? Yeah, yeah, we play nine to with nine to five. I have the game on my PS4. I have not even played it yet. What are your thoughts on the game so far? Like, if you can give me a preview of what you think. It, it's fun, you know. It's like one of those uh, shooters that like uh, people like come out like. 
nowhere. There's zombies everywhere. They're, they have different speeds. Some zombies are slow walking ones, and then all of a sudden ones will just spring up at you. Then they have like the ones that are like a blob size that they'll explode next yeah. to you. So it's pretty cool. Like there's different things where you have to find like health to regain your health and um, you know try to get uh, uh, rank up your ammo and stuff like that. That's very important in between levels and. It's cool when you play. I don't know how to play single player because I didn't play single player. I only did uh, co-op so far. But with co-op, if you die, you go back to the beginning of that level. Is it the same way, comedy player? If you play single player, like um, you don't lose you the game. Yeah, I like, think you actually have to go back to the very beginning. Yeah, but it does not game over though. It's like you continue from. No, the, no, yeah, I don't game over. If if you're on the campaign, yeah, just you know, you die and you respawn. See, That's stuff, awesome. Yeah, stuff like that makes it fun, so you really aren't disappointed if you completely die. But I, they do have arcade modes. So I'm not sure if the arcade mode, may, it might work like that, though, that you might yeah, die and it's game over. Yeah, so, then it's like the uh, original GTA version on the PS1, you know, and it's a sky view of, you know, running around and shooting and stuff like that. So it's not a bad little game, you know. It's free. You know, who cares? You know, play it if you like it, you know. It's fun with co-op, though. I think, I think that game's, like, a lot more fun co-op way. So, yeah. pretty cool. And it's free. I mean, free is uh, fun. So, like, you can't argue with free. Like, yeah. That's my uh, favorite price. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That free yeah. 99. Yeah, it was my favorite, favorite price, too, for a while, but I ended up in jail too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. I don't steal shit. Anyway, uh, I wanted to, to talk to you guys and get your thoughts on something that you all know is near and dear to my heart. My good friend, Zach Tretton, is stepping down from his throne at Sony. What do you guys think about this? He, he, Definitely uh, not going to affect the company too bad. I mean, he just, I don't know. I don't know the best way to put it. Like, um, he basically just, like, listened to his audience, you know, basically gave the rest of the Sony representatives and programmers, you know, like, hey, this is what they want, this is what they like. But all in all, it's not like a big loss. Yeah, it's kind of tragic in a way, you know, it made news everywhere, but it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, they're still going to go on. <laughs> I don't think you're telling the truth. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> this guy has been with Sony for 19 years, guys. He's, yep. he's really, he's cut his teeth and he's worked hard. He was one of the founding uh, members of the PlayStation brand. So uh, he's been at this thing going full force since the beginning, and he actually had a hand in all of our early adoptions of PlayStation playing Battle Arena Toshin and playing Jumping Flash. He was there back then, so I got a lot of respect for this guy. I didn't know nearly as much about him until after I got this news. I didn't know how long he'd been with Sony, but when I found out his you know, his resume and the things that he's done with the company, it really uh, it hit me hard that this guy, you know, he's pushed forward this agenda for us, the gamers, and made things grand for us. And, yeah. uh, you know, I don't think he could have uh, left Sony in a in a better position than he is now as far as stepping down. He put the PS4 in a position to take over and is doing really, really well. It resonates with the consumers. And uh, during the pre-show, uh, Not Too Nerdy, you, you made a comment about his delivery and the way that he comes across. Why don't you elaborate yeah. on that? Let me know I, what you had to say about it. I think, like, the way he talks, he sort of, like, relates more to the gamers. Like, he has a way of public speaking that, that I think that's what Sony is going to miss overall because... With Yoshida and like all the re the rest of them, like uh, they're not really, uh, they're not gonna be able to relate to the gamers. Gamers won't be able to relate to them. So we're gonna have to see if the guy that's replacing them is actually gonna be able to do the same job. Because anytime he spoke, it seemed like he had epic moments when he said something. Like for example, the E3 moment that everyone's gonna remember. He get, he went up on stage and he got everyone fired up and was ready for next generation. And, you know, he knew exactly the words that the gamers wanted to hear, and I think that's his like part of his mind he knew what he people want to hear and he tried to achieve that so other than that I don't think they're really gonna miss anything like company wise it's sort of like he it's a passing of the time it's good someone else has a, a chance now to do this and it just shows that Sony also has opportunity to use a different mindset different minds to, to show because now Sony has to move on Sony has to do different things and that's the only way they're gonna survive as a company so I think that this is a good move for everyone, for him and for them. And he didn't leave them in a bad position. He left them in, like, a really good position, too. So, What do you think, Briar Rabbit? I think it is good to go out on top, and he is definitely doing that. I, You know, if you're, gonna, if you're thinking about retiring, why not go out now when PlayStation 4 just sold 6 million cop or consoles? 
you know, there's no there's no way you can have more success than what you're having right now. If he's planning on working in the future, you know, anybody would be happy to hire him. If he's not planning on working in the future, he's got war stories that he could tell for the rest of his life and be like, hey, you know, while you're sitting on the beach in Belize, you could be telling this story about how you made Sony the number one console in the world. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it is true. He, he is going out on top and ended it the right way. Uh, his PR uh, person probably should have talked to Anderson Silva and told him to do that. Because imagine if he went and fought Major Nelson and kicked him and broke his leg. And, you know, he went out on the top and been in a lot of trouble. So that's what you do, man. When you're in a position like that, that you can't be touched, your your head and shoulders above the rest. I've done my job. Let me sit back and watch, you know, watch the aftermath. So much, much success to you, uh, Zach, from the Beastly Thought Show. Uh, continue to do whatever you want to do as long as it's great, brother. The only thing, though, I will criticize it for is who wants to leave at 19? You should have left at 20. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Just make it like even two decades. 19 is a weird number, you know? Just say. Other than that, 20 well, years would have been perfect, but... You probably heard yeah, that done. kill zone missing 1080p stuff coming down and said, oh, I'm out of here before all this. Let me, let me leave before everyone starts rioting. Yeah. <laughs> on, on to that, Brian Rabbit. That really, uh, to me, that kind of lie is really something that shouldn't take place. I think that Sony should be held accountable for those types of lies, too, the same way that I would if Microsoft came out and said, hey, look, this game is running 1080p native, and you find out it's not. Stop the lies. I mean, it's pointless to lie. Anything done in darkness will come to light. You guys heard about that, right? This whole uh, yeah. The only reason I knew, it, knew about it was from Not Too Nerdy's video, and I just kind of thought it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know. I just think like the problem is that a lot of people like like I, he's commented about my video. Like people cannot tell the difference between 1080p online. Okay, that you could tell the difference if you look at a 1080p game offline and you look at a 1080p game online, they're different because online goes by netcodes. So, like, it runs off your GPU, but it depends on the servers that day and stuff like that. It might not look as clear as it could look. As opposed to running a game 1080p on your console, like, offline, it'll always look the, as sharp as it can look on the console. So that, that's a funny thing. Like, it took them how long? Four months to figure out that it's not 1080p? And Digital Foundry is the ones that researched the PlayStation 4 right away, that game, and they missed it too. So that just shows how minimal these changes are. People are, like, making a big deal out of 1080p when in reality you can't tell sometimes. Like, so I, I think that's funny. In the end, it really doesn't make a difference, and that's proof right there that they pretty much fooled us all, and no one knew. They had to be so damn close because of dig Digital Foundries. <laughs> If they did their research, and, and this is what the company is known for, and they weren't able to catch it, it must have been just a sliver off, you know? Yeah, I think that's true. Was it 900p the game was running at? It was so it's different dimensions, 960 by 1080p. So that's not normal. But what it is, it's that's that's more an interlace. So it's not true progressive like for 1080p. So that's why like they got confused because they never seen that dimension before. And they thought it was 1080p, and then they, what they actually looked at, they said that it's not. And that's what you know Sony had to admit to it later. But ultimately, that game looked fantastic, though. Regardless <laughs> of what, I mean, it, it looks amazing. That's not that game's problem. Is yeah. the resolution it's running at? The game is boring, and yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> Speaking of boring games, Titanfall. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Uh, Vince Zampella, guys, he's, uh, they were doing this um, future Titanfall event, and uh, he tweeted out that, that his studio did not sell Titanfall to Microsoft, meaning that's more hope for people like myself that the next Titanfall will be on other consoles. What do you guys think about that? Have you guys heard about it? Yeah, I've heard a little bit about it. Yeah. I just thought it was another rumor that's just been going around. He was probably yeah. like everything else. So it's it seemed to confuse more people than anything else. He tweeted out that he doesn't know what all the confusion is uh, is about about the future of the game, and that Respawn did not sell the rights to the game to Microsoft. EA made a deal with Microsoft for the first game. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first one. For the no. first game. So. So if they make a franchise out of it, will most likely it be a multi. Uh, platform game. Yeah, I Depends on know. who shows up with a bucket full of money. 
And Microsoft got the money, man. Well, see, that's yeah. the thing that got me, like, too. Like, uh, when the Xbox One came out, they had Dead Rising 3 to themselves. Um, but the two games before that, it was a, a multi-platform game. That's what kind of pissed me off, because I really liked that game. I enjoyed it. Uh, the co-op looked awesome, because you could play the whole game with a friend, and it was for the Xbox One. But, the you know, the two before that were multi-platform. So, I, in a way, I kind of see what you're saying, but I just hate it when they do that, you know. One game comes out or two games come out, the next game only one uh, console is going to get it or, you know, vice versa. It's just ridiculous how they do that. Yeah, that'll never happen again, though. EA, uh, you know, Microsoft, Microsoft used to have a lot of in-house studios. It seems like they got rid of them all. Sorry, Microsoft, I thought used to have a lot of, uh, like, in-house studios. It seems like they got rid of them all, and now instead of having in, in-house development, what they're doing is they're, they're just throwing that money out at developers and saying... You know, just make your game Xbox exclusive. That way we don't have to deal with the development yeah. stuff. We'll just give you the money to make it an exclusive. Sony doesn't get it. Uh, it can still be available on the PS or on the PC. Uh, Microsoft wins. Gamers, you know, win. Xbox gamers win. Uh, but they don't have to deal with all the extra development headaches, you know. And I, I don't know if that's really a good thing for gamers. I'd rather see multi-platform games and let the best console win. But I don't know. It just seems like the road they're on right now, and it seems like pl- Sony's going to have to also start playing that game. Otherwise, they're going to start losing more and more exclusives. Well, the thing is, I don't yeah. think that'll ever happen again. The only reason why it happens is because Microsoft, uh, well, first of all, last generation people thought Xbox 360 is going to sell more, so EA already had a close arrangement with Microsoft to begin with, and uh, this whole time EA figured that. Remember, Microsoft is supposed to have the DRM on it. So they figure that they're going to make full sales, plus they're getting money, and Microsoft will be the, the, the winning console right now. They had no idea what was going to happen after that, the whole event. This, this deal went down before all that. So yeah. they already thought they are making full profit, plus they get money events. And that's who wouldn't take that offer? But now that they know, if they knew that the PlayStation 4 would be as good as it was right now, and that whole reverse decision, the 180 for the, the Xbox One, they never would have did that. They would have went to every console. They would have wanted to make the most profit available. And especially EA. EA wants to make money. So yeah. that's they'll never do that again. That's why I think that the next time they have it, like obviously it's going to go to everyone. It's it, That was the only reason. That's why I think Microsoft sort of got lucky with the timing of it. And it will pretty much never happen again. That only happens when the next generation is starting. So it probably won't happen again like that. Okay, so let me get this right. That's not too nerdy. Stamp of approval. The Titanfall 2 will be on PS4. <laughs> I, I almost guarantee it. Like, All it, it's, right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen because it, it's, it's going to happen. They're going to. And plus, they're going to switch up, get out of that source engine, too. They're going to they're gonna go to source engine number two because that's the only thing holding them back, too, I think. <laughs> yeah, but how long are you going to think we're going to have to wait for that? Two, three, four years? Uh, no. uh, I think two years because EA already made sure and they announced the same thing Battlefield. They're not going to rush something a year in one year anymore because yeah. Battlefield 4 is a perfect example of oh, what yeah. happens when they rush. So they're not going to do that anymore, I think. They're going to do two years, every two years. Yeah, that's what I was hearing about, like a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess EA uh, has control of Battlefront and I guess they're coming out with another game mm-hmm. too, like in a year or so. and. Uh, they've been working on it a while for a while, and people had questions if um, it was going to have crashing and stuff like Battlefield 4. And I was like, I don't know, I can't tell you anything about that. You know, I'm not a developer or anything, but you know, I just hope it doesn't happen because you know, that really affects their sales and you know the people that want to buy their games. You know, they're kind of scared. You know, hey, I'm gonna go spend sixty dollars. Am I gonna have to deal with this for you know three months on end of nothing but crashing and you know frame rates dropping and all that bull crap? I'm worried about the servers because. I know everyone's saying the server's not a big thing, but you guys heard that the Xbox One has a 900 megabyte day one patch, right, for yeah, Titanfall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, how's that could work on the server? That's why, that if it, if it works well, then that shows right there that the servers are really good, what people are saying. But if it doesn't work well, then, I don't know. That's going to be the ultimate test, to be honest with you. That's a, that's a major patch. I'm, yeah. I'm actually going to be buying that game uh, digitally, too, so I'll be downloading oh. 16 gigs. <laughs> Day one, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people doing it. I don't think they're doing a uh, download like before the game releases either. So it's you got to no. download it that day, which sucks. Same thing for uh, PC though, for Origin. You can't do the PC early download either. 
I think it's even bigger on the PC. <laughs> Somebody told me it's like I don't I can't remember the exact stat, but it was a big ass file. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, have you guys heard about this new uh, Last of Us movie that's in the works by Sony? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Beastly? I know you're a, you're a huge fan of Last of Us. You what is that? Go is see that a, a movie? Is that a game? No, it's going to be a movie, like a let Hollywood me, uh, movie. Oh, oh, hold up, let me get my, my uh, Buster sword. He actually <laughs> is it a game. What? <laughs> Never heard of The Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, man, Sony uh, Screen Gems is, uh, they actually ha they have the movie... In uh, post production now, it's being written. Post production? Oh, okay. Pre, I mean, pre production. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's in production now. Let's just let's use some ebonics here. They're making a movie, okay? <laughs> uh, but at, at any rate, they uh, they have the actual writers from The Last of Us uh, writing the script for the film, and so that is something that kind of hit me as okay. This is potentially good news because for the last 25 years, we've been hit with a slew of lackluster video games and movie conversions. Unless you, I mean, you might have one out of every 20 video game and movie conversions that work, but only because they steal the plot from another film, like uh, Enter the Dragon. Let's make Mortal Kombat, but turn it into Enter the Dragon. <laughs> it's crap. You know, uh, but I think if they have the original writers from The Last of Us who actually have the true video game canon, you know, at the forefront of their mind, this game, this movie could end up being really, really good. So... What do you guys think about it? You know I'm loving this. <laughs> I'd rather see them for you. make a new story, right, a Last of Us story, and put it into an 8- to 10-hour game than an hour-and-a-half movie. <laughs> I'd rather have a new game, a new Last of Us game, than a, than a movie. I would, too, because the, the game is better than, like, any movie I've ever watched. But the thing is, uh, during the pre-show, Not Too Nerdy, he made a good point that Sony is right now changing gears. They're interested in jumping on all fronts as far as making as much revenue as possible, just like they're doing with Spider-Man. Uh, and they want to, you know, attack this movie front and hopefully bring in more more money from, you know, The Last of Us game turning it into a movie. Now, I don't think that this movie will, ha per se, have anything to do with uh, the game, the original. I don't think it will because um, yeah. the, 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 the developers of the game did not want to continue on with the story of Joel and Ellie. They've already voiced that numerous times. Yeah. And so I'm thinking that this will be either a completely different aspect, you know, of this universe, story told about different people, or it will be a pre a, or a, a prequel to the game on, in some way. I don't think that there, it's going to be particularly Joel and Ellie in this movie. I think it's going to be in the universe, but it's going to be something a little bit different. What do you guys think about that? So how many movies do we have so far? We got... Uh, the Last of Us, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. God uh, of War. What was, what, what was that one? God of War. Yeah, like, they got all these movies that are coming out for... He Heavenly Sword. And they keep turning down the script for Uncharted, and they keep trying to write it and, and turn it down. So Sony's making moves. Like, they have to capitalize on their franchises. It's just that my fear is, like, I don't know how it's going to work because... For example, like I said, like games like The Last of Us, Uncharted, these are already games that are, are like movies. You know, they tell a story already. Yeah. So how does that work out to, you know, the actual movie? Like, what do you do? Do you just make it in the same world, just different people? Or what do you do? And same thing why Metal Gear never got done. You know, Metal Gear Solid, because it's been movies. You know, like Okujima, he made it like a movie. So that's something people will love to see, but in reality, didn't you already see it by playing the game? You got yeah, to live how, the movie. With, yeah, with, that's all, how it, with, all, with all due respect, Metal Gear Solid, no movie has that many plot twists. Because <laughs> 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 that game has a million plot twists. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, something that we're not thinking about, because Briar Rabbit said he'd rather play an 8- to 10-hour new game of The Last of Us versus a 2-hour movie that may or may not be good. A lot of people aren't gamers. A lot of people might see the trailer and be like, wow, that looks intriguing, but I don't play video games. I don't have time for it. I got kids. I got work. I got all this stuff going on. I can't play the game. Ooh, but now they have a movie based on that game. It looked really intriguing. I got two hours. I'll go this weekend down to the theater and check it out. So Sony has people in, the, you know, in their infrastructure thinking about every aspect of this money. And so more than likely, that's what they're aiming for, those people who may or may not 
be able to play an 8, 10, 14 hour game and just want to get a dose of what this universe is all about. Well, uh, would you rather have, uh, this is just a question for you guys, um, I know Beasley would be really interested in the movie. Uh, since you played the game, I've never played Last of Us, uh, but would you rather the movie be closest as possible to the game story and, you know, just put it, you know, into the movie, would that be something you're interested in? Or them to change it up or them to kind of, like, prolong the game? You know, you, you know the story that happened in the game and then, you know, the rest of it, like, happens in the movie, kind of like a sequel. How would you like that? Because I know, like, a lot of people, uh, this might be a bad example, this is only what I can think of, but, like, the Twilight books, when they were out, and then, you know, they, they try to put it into a movie... Mm. Uh, my fiance said, you know, that it was completely different. Once it went from the book to the movie, it was a, it was not the same anymore. So how would you like that? And that's the same with a lot of people, because I know a lot of people were disappointed when Twilight went from the book to the movie because they wanted it to be just like the book, and it wasn't. So, you know, how would you how would you want the movie to be, in your opinion? First of all, if you're a man and you have a set of balls and you watch Twilight, kill yourself. <laughs> I love Twilight. No, she's oh, yeah. <laughs> to each his own. To each his own. Now, uh, me personally, I love the game so much. I wouldn't mind seeing it, you know, in a movie form if they could somehow squeeze that story into a two-hour movie. I think it'd yeah. be great. But how often does that happen? Very seldom will you ever look. They did it with Psycho. And you see, that was a huge plot. They did a shot-for-shot shot remake, telling yeah. the original story. Now, if they could somehow tell the story of The Last of Us in two, two and a half hours, yeah, I think it'd be great. You know what to expect, though, so it it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't be as exciting, especially for the people who are interested in the canon of the game. I think they'd have to change aspects of it. Uh, personally, either one would be would work fine for me. I, I would like to see the, the story of the game retold, and I'd like to see, see something new because I love the universe of The Last of Us. I don't just love the characters. I love what's going on. I love the the infection. I love the story. I love the world, and you know, I'd like to see anything in that in that whole universe. I, just I can't say like I'm, you... I'm particularly excited about this. To me, it seems like Last of Us was a very special thing. It was a great story with two people, two very fleshed-out characters that had really good, evolved, you know, uh, character arcs, right? And it, it was really, it was touching. It was really good. The world itself, I don't know. It wasn't that special. It was relatively generic as far as kind of futuristic, zombie, apocalyptic things go. I can't imagine that just slapping the name Last of Us on a movie that's set in a futuristic, apocalyptic, zombie-filled world is really going to be all that special. To me, the special thing about Last of Us was the characters, Joel and Ellie. I think that was what's special. If they're not going to be in there, then this movie has nothing for me, really. I'd rather just get a sequel to The Last of Us, written by the same guys with updated play mechanics. And I don't think trying to draw people who haven't played the game to the movie theater to watch the movie about something they don't really care about, I don't know if that's really that successful. And normally these things flop right on their faces anyway. So I'd, I'd rather just see another game. Put all your resources toward another game. Sell another six million copies of the game and let's go. Like, going towards what you said, though, that they usually flop, I feel like it does that for, like, comic books a lot. Like, it's harder to do these because people have to understand there's a movie adaptation to it. So, like, they're going to make it a little bit different to fit in the movie world. Like, it's someone else's transformative work. Like, they're trying to save their vision of it. And The, that's, the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, perfect example yeah. of that, trans, I mean, yeah. that transformation to film. And some people's like, oh, why? This didn't happen in the comic book but it, it happened on the show. Like, you have to understand, they're two different worlds, they're two different things, and like, that's why some of these movies flop, is not that there's a bad movie, just people say, oh, it wasn't like what I expected, or it wasn't like what I saw. And now you have, like, you don't know who you're trying to attract anymore. Are you trying to attract yeah. a new audience, or are you trying to attract the people who liked it? Because the people who liked it want it to be exactly the same way. They right. like that version, you know? So if, by you changing it, now who are you trying to grab? And that that's the problem I see them have it. But if you did something like God of War, first of all, if the people that did uh, 300 did God of War, I think that style would be awesome for God of War. But it, it, other than that, like, how are you going to do God of War? Is everything going to be, like, CGI? Like, what, what are you going to do to it? Like, you know, that that's the thing I don't understand. If they, they made it, like, 300... It. What was that? They'd have to manipulate it. I don't think they can keep it the same. Because God of War was, like, such a big game series. It would be drastically too much uh, to put in 
to an hour and a half, two hour movie. Not just that, how core is it, it is, you know, like, yeah. like they're going to have to tone it down a lot. Unless, like I said, they do it like that comic book art style, like 300. Like, if they do yeah. it like that, then it, I they got it. I got it. That. They're going to make the whole movie one quick time event, and they're going to put little buttons <laughs> in front of everybody's seat. And to see squish, the next scene, you're going to have to hit that damn button as half as you can. Dude. <laughs> That would actually be kind of awesome, though. And, like, <laughs> they go by the amount of people. Whoever pressed the, the things right, that's what will happen. Or otherwise, it's yeah. game over. <laughs> now, now, look, I, 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 want, I want to get back to what Briar Rabbit said because I kind of I want, I want to respectfully disagree with Briar Rabbit. Now, Briar Rabbit, you said that uh, The Last of Us, the thing that made it, you know, as entertaining for you and was special for you was Joel and Ellie. Yeah. And that's that's very, very true. Now, for me personally, I think pretty much all the characters in the game were special from Tess on. You know, pretty much everybody you met had something special, and it was the voice acting and the writing, and that's the thing you got to remember. It was the writers that, that instructed these characters on what to say and how to perform for you. Now, mm -hmm. we, got this, we got the same people behind that game making a movie, and you see how their characters were, were portrayed in the game. All they got to do is be able to relate that same type of instruction to live actors, and you'll have characters just as engrossing on film as you did in the game. So I think it can work. It's not like Ellie and Joel are real people. These are voice actors, and they are instructed and given lines on what to say by people who wrote this stuff out. Now, you got the same people writing the same kind of stuff for a movie. I think it has potential to be great. It, it could be. You know, it, it, it has the potential. They got, like, maybe, what, a one in a hundred shot of making a decent movie if you take, like, like past performance as a gauge for future performance, which you can't really do. But, you know, out of how many how many video game translations to movies have ended up with a pretty good movie? Like, it's just a pretty good movie. Like, uh, the first Tomb Raider was pretty good. The first Mortal Kombat was pretty good. Super Mario Brothers, I mean... Super yeah. Mario, 1987. No, that was not. Don't forget about the Wizards. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, but like going back with Briar Rabbit said though, I, I agree with him in a way that like, like for the new people, like the people that are trying to to attract to this movie, like this is a world they've seen before. They've seen people stranded in like like a apocalyptic world. You know, they've seen zombies before. So for them to see the trailer of it, like. What's really good, attractive to that movie that's different? That's what I think he's like saying. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like it's the world itself, the environment, and like the thing that made The Last of Us so great is like you said, Beastly Gamer, is the people, the characters, and how they acted. But in order to go get to that, like you have to convince people to watch people in this world, and like people see The Walking Dead, they see zombies, and that whole zombie craze is starting to disappear. It, it was it was vampires, it was uh, werewolves, and then zombies came out, and then now it's like starting to disappear. So like that's the thing: is that going to sell in the movie theaters? You know, especially that Resident Evil. They keep bringing out Resident Evil over two years. That pretty much drives people crazy. I can tell. Look at look at piece of gamer right now. He's not happy about Resident Evil. <laughs> like, I am not. I swear, <laughs> I hate every single one of them, man. Oh God, it pisses me off that people like Yui Bowler are allowed to walk around. Free without being in handcuffs and locked up, <laughs> to to do the kind of things that these people uh, do to these wonderful franchises. I remember when Resident Evil first came out, the movie. I was like, oh my god, I don't believe it. The trailer showed a mansion. I was like, this is going to be a retelling of Resident Evil One. I can't believe. I'm in a theater. I'm like, what the hell? I couldn't <laughs> believe it. You know, they they basically shit on the entire concept with no respect to the original canon. They added Wonder Woman, a.k.a. Alice, to the movie. Yes, hey, but in, in all fairness, we did get to see your boobs. Oh, yeah. I don't give a More damn. I, I, got, I, got <laughs> for that, okay? I got a wife for that. If you really want to call them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just think that after the long history of video game movie conversions and all the major fails, we deserve, we deserve our Arkham City. We deserve our Arkham Asylum. We deserve a good video game to movie conversion. All the Batman games before Arkham Asylum came out were terrible. It was a curse. And uh, everybody knew Batman, blah, blah, blah. Every Batman game that came for the last 10 years was absolute horse shit. And that's just the truth. Yeah. And then when, when uh, Arkham Asylum came out, they completely changed the game. They blew everybody's minds, and now Batman is known as the best superhero game of all time. We need that, but we need it for video game 
video game to movie conversions. And I hope that I would love for The Last of Us to be that that one. I'm not as optimistic about it because I'm being realistic. You know, look at everything we've dealt with up until this point. But I don't think that these people with these viv these open imaginations and this massive creativity are going to stop trying to do this until somebody gets it right. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's cool. Well, I'm going to interrupt you guys real quick. Um, I got to visit my uh, uh, fiance's family, so nice uh, trying to catch up a little bit with you guys. And nice seeing everybody. Uh, definitely see you guys uh, next weekend. And uh, sorry, I'm bailing out, but you know, some things you got to do, you got to do. Tell her, <laughs> tell everybody I said I love them. All right. <laughs> all right. Take care. All right, guys. You guys have a good one, man. All right. See. You. Yeah. So, did you guys see the news that? Uh, Call of Duty this week released a specific deal, piece of DLC just for people, or an early piece of DLC for people who had er bought a season pass. No, no, I didn't know this. This was cool. Okay, it's cool depending on your perspective, but if you had bought a season's pass, you got early access to a new weapon that they're going to release to anybody who buys the DLC later. And I thought that was pretty interesting because as a season pass owner, I was like, hey, great. You know, I get I get a little something special for shelling out that, I can't remember how much it was, 50 or $60. It was expensive for the season pass for Call of Duty. But once I thought about it for a few minutes, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Here is trying to convince me to buy next year's season pass. And all the people who bought the DLC last time, just a separate DLC, uh, for the first pack of DLC that came out last month are now saying, Oh, should I buy a season pass just so I get a few extra days for that gun? Or oh, so they I do wait? allow you. They do allow you buy the season pass that day to yeah. get. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking about it. You know, like I understand that there's definitely financial concerns with this, but it was really cool as a season pass owner to just get the DLC early and be, you know, because usually when a new gun is released on in a you know a popular online shooter everybody's using it, right? The best possible thing you can do is use, like, a counter to that. You know, like, if, if everybody's using the brand-new sniper rifle, run around with a submachine gun and, you know, get up close. Mm -hmm. In this case, you know, just because only people had it, only season pass holders had it, it was nice because you felt like you had something exclusive for a change, uh, which I, I liked, but it was weird that they... It, just how they released it. They also released new Black Ops 2 DLC this week, or last week. Really? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, new skins for weapons. Well, that's because I heard, I don't know, it's true. I heard a lot of people stop playing Ghosts to go back to Black Ops 2 because a lot of people do not like Ghosts that much. So I, I, I know there's a lot of people who still play Black Ops 2. Hey, hey, Connie, how you doing? Connie! Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we can. Um, I got the timings wrong. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <It's okay>. Hey. <laughs> What's up, girl? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Now, Brian Rabbit, last last I heard, Black Ops 2 and Call of Duty Ghost had about equal amount of players on both. Yeah, I haven't yeah. actually checked the uh, Black Ops 2 servers because I, like I said earlier, is I haven't had my Xbox 360 hooked up in a few months, so I haven't gone back to Black Ops 2 because I actually really enjoy Ghosts. But yeah, that's what I've been hearing too. Is a lot of people they don't they didn't dig on the slower pace gunplay and uh, gameplay of. Call of Duty Ghost, so they just stayed with Black Ops 2, which is a similar thing that happened when uh, World at War came out. You know, people just stayed with COD 4, kind of skipped World at War, and then when Modern Warfare 2 came out, they just kind of moved on to that instead, uh, which is legit. You know, if, I like that there's variety in that series. I know there's not much variety in that series. You're basically pointing and shooting, but I do like that there is variety, and I think that for different strokes, there's different folks, and so I, I like Call of Duty Ghosts. And I'm okay that they're supporting Black Ops 2. I think that's a good idea because if you're still a big fan, you're still getting new content. I, I would like to see the DLC go for two or three years. I think that'd be really fun. Now, you just mentioned World at War. Do you think uh, the next one's going to go back to World War II? Or? No, I think it's going to be... I, I'm a big Drifter fan. He, he, does, he gets a lot of uh, exclusive Call of Duty news. And uh, he got some pretty big news that... Sledgehammer Games, is, who is going to be releasing the next Call of Duty, mm -hmm. is going to be releasing Modern Warfare 4. Okay. okay. Wow, that's going to be exciting. Well, uh, Connie, what have you been up to this week, girl? Um, my PC is now up and running, which awesome. is 
marvelous. I just need to get some hard. I need to get another hard drive because I haven't got enough memory to actually record anything. So I just ordered that yesterday, and that should come Tuesday. So other than that, I've been streaming. Sweet. Uh, yeah. And so you're, you're going to be doing some PC gaming then, huh? Mm hmm Yeah. I downloaded a game yesterday. It was on sale on Steam, and it's called One Finger Punch. Have you guys played that? <laughs> no. no, it sounds dirty, no, it's though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kung fu game, and you click on the mouse, and you've got to just punch people. <laughs> I just love to play that all day. It's brilliant. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, uh, I wanted to ask you guys a question. If, if a game was 400 hours through a single-player campaign, but the game was really fun, would you complete it? Uh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, 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 know, I know, Brian Rabbit, you're not the biggest fan of Metal Gear Solid, but Hideo Kojima just came out and said that he's thinking that uh, the customers, the people who buy Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom Pain, may take issue with the game because it's 200 times bigger than Ground Zeroes. That makes it about 400 hours, and uh, I think that's marvelous, man. Because I'm a big Metal Gear Solid fan. That's 400 hours. I'm going to have a gray beard when I'm done, looking like Gandalf. <laughs> 400 hours. You no, know, it's been I a mean, long time. And, and, and then I when see. you see... Did we lose it? It's been a long time since I stuck my teeth into something that was really long. And by really long, I mean like a 40-hour RPG, like a Final Fantasy type of thing. I just don't have the time for it. You know, I, I, I have two jobs. I've got two kids. i got a wife. i got a wedding I'm planning. i got, you know, YouTube. Uh, I like playing Call of Duty. I like fast-action shooters. Uh, are you talking 400 or 200 hours to no, play through it? I'm talking about 400 hours. 400 hours. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. How, how many days straight is that? If you were to play it 24 hours a day, I can't that's... do math that high, man. Calculators. <laughs> 16 days. 16 yeah. days. I mean, I would forget the characters at the beginning of the story, but I got to the end. It would be like living a real life. <laughs> Playing a video game. That, it, would that be like the longest piece of like content ever? Like, what is like War and Peace? How long does that take to read? <laughs> Wait, but, so, but, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, is this including uh, cutscenes? The four hour, four hundred hours. Uh, I I'm think sure it's, it's like eighty percent cutscenes, knowing him. Yeah. Well, well, you know, Kojima, he has an affinity for having long cutscenes. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure that that included, you know, all the content in the game, but. We know that Ground Zeroes is sitting at around two hours before any side missions. And he said that uh, the Phantom Pain is 200 times longer than Ground Zeroes. So uh, that's 400 hours, man. And so you I haven't mean, officially said, yeah, it's 400 hours. It's just people taking the little the literal term of 200 times more. Well, that that would be four hundred hours. Yeah, I just saying like because when Kojima says it's not that long, like his cutscenes, those are long. So if he says something is long, I might take his like I might think it's word for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> my cutscenes aren't that long. Next thing you know, like two hours later, I came back and I'm like, oh man, it's fine. I can play. Yes. Like, <laughs> well, well, Connie, the thing is, he Kojima came out. I think it was yesterday. And he made that comment. He said that he's worried that the people who buy the game are going to get uh, frustrated and not be able to complete it because of how long it takes. Now, the fact that Kojima, he's known for making these incredibly long games. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker uh, on the PSP was longer than, like, Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm -hmm. I mean, these games are huge. And the fact that he's saying something like that, and he already has his track record of making very long games, this thing has to be gigantic. It has to be huge. And I'm thinking that this uh, Ground Zeroes is probably just a small slice that he sliced out of, of, of the original game and said, hey, look, we don't need this. We'll just put this out there for the for the people who want the game so they can get a taste of it, see the new mechanics, see how the world is, and then when they get this new one, they can just put everything else to the side for a year and play the game. Because it's going to take a long time to beat that game. Now, I know yeah. you're a big Metal Gear Solid fan, Connie. Do you have 400 hours to put aside for that game? I'll book time off work. 
<laughs> bring it on! Like it's nice to have a long game. You know, like a good example is Hitman Revolution. Like if I completed that within a day, and I was just sort of like, what? What is this? Like I just hate short gameplays. Bring it on. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. I want so, to see the first Let's Play. Twenty minute yeah. chunks. <laughs> <laughs> what about speedruns? Does that, does that get rid of speedruns? Because, like, Metal Gear always has, like, people doing speedruns for that. And, like, I I was so happy when I did the Metal Gear Solid 4. I did under five hours so I could get Big Boss Emblem. And, like, that was, like, my accomplishment. Like, I did it under five hours, just under five hours. And, like, people do speedruns all the time for that. Like, that just takes that out of, the, out of it, right? There's no way you could do a speedrun or anything, huh? Unless you, know, you find glitches in the game, you get a two hundred hour speed run. <laughs> no, you know, oh, yeah, and you can't save your game, so you have to uh, play it straight through. <laughs> you'd have to uh, get a little portable refrigerator, sit it next to your toilet, put the TV <laughs> on the wall, and let's go. Four hundred hours, jeez. What he didn't mention is there's a new play mechanic where after you get the little like exclamation point uh, because somebody's noticed you and you go hide. They actually forget in real time, so it could be two to seven hours before they forget that they just saw you. <laughs> so you just gotta hide there until then. <laughs> See, that's why you can play your PS4 games on your PS Vita on a go. See that? Right. I'm that's why I did that. The vent. Can you see? <laughs> <laughs> I think he almost forgot about me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean. That just kind of blew my mind thinking about the prospect of a game. That that'll be the biggest game ever, I believe. That would be equivalent to playing through like an entire MMO nonstop to completion, I guess. Yeah. You know, and finding as much stuff as you can find. It's just a very long time, and I guess for a lot of people who don't who lack the dedication, everybody can't be a sniper wolf, right, Connie? Mm -hmm. Certainly. And, yeah. So you know, I, I got the dedication, so I'm ready for it. Bring it on. Uh, but Konami. Beastly Gamer, uh, what you said, though, um, in your video was, like, the, when you said accomplishment, like, the sense of accomplishment for something like that, I can only imagine. That must be amazing. Like, once you actually finally finish something like that, you actually would kind of feel completed. But, I it's mean, like... Or terrible, because terrible, yeah. you're going to build a house in that amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's rumored to be the last Metal Gear game as well, isn't it? I know he said that with nearly all of his ones, but... If it's that long, maybe that's why it's the that's last true. game. It, I mean, people look. Jay Z said he was going to retire. These people always say stuff like this. As, lo as long as long as people are uh, willing to pay for it, somebody else is going to take the helm and push something up. Now, I know uh, Kojima. He is the man when it comes to uh, Metal Gear, but I couldn't. I could not see uh, the, his actual production house just stopping. You know the Metal Gear franchise after this game. I mean, especially if it does well. If it does really well, you might as well say it's a new lease. Because if it does really well, people are going to be looking for more of it. It's a whole new mechanic. It's a new world. It's a new UI. Everything about this game is completely contrasted compared to the others. So this is something new. And if it works, I'm pretty sure they're going to do more of them. The thing oh. I'm kind of worried is that uh, he always talked about doing film. That that's like his passion. That's why you always see that in the in the games. That I would not be shocked if he tried to move on to do film before he's completely done doing anything. So that's something that I would like to see if that's what he's gonna do next because he's always talk about doing film and stuff. That's why you see like the way he makes the games, it's like a movie. Like it's it's like a movie. So yeah. I'm trying to get Call of Duty Ghost to boot up so I can check how many hours I've played it. <laughs> Just for like comparison's sake. <laughs> how, how many? How many do you think you're sitting at? I, you I, I'll guess. bet it's forty or less. I mean, I, I have split it up between two consoles, so. I'm probably sitting somewhere around ten hours. Yeah. If that. Yeah, if that. It's probably a little bit less. Usually, I, I'll hop on and make two or three videos, and then hop right off. You know, because it used to be Kate and I playing together, but now that I do videos, she has to sit and watch, and she's so depressed. She wants to play <laughs> Diablo. Look, we got Diablo 3, and she wants to play that with me. And so I'm thinking we'll go ahead and do a Let's Play of that, something that we can actually do together, because we used to play all our games together, and now we're so it's like we're a million miles apart. Well, what you got to do is get a, get her another PlayStation for the bedroom. We got four, right, right. Oh, 
PlayStation yeah. 4, though, so that you can, uh, she can be on your team and you guys can play together. Oh, you've got four oh, PlayStation 4s? No, no, I got, I got one PS4, I got four PS3s, two 360s, and no Xbox Ones. Yay! <laughs> 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 I got you guys beat on the uh, Call of Duty Ghost, by the way. A solid two hours. Two Damn, hours! <laughs> you be killing them fools. Yeah, I, I went on that, and I'm like, I, I'm going back to Black Ops 2. I played that a little bit more. I just, I don't, I'm not a fan of Call of Duty Ghost at all. But now, he's getting uh, too crazy. So. I, I, li- I like it a lot more now than I used to. Briar Rabbit will tell you guys... When it, when it first came out, I talked to him all the time. I said, I fucking hate this game. There's campers everywhere. I feel like I'm running through the field, a little house on the prairie. It's so wide open. And and he said, the force is not strong with you. Let me talk to you for a little bit. <laughs> and and he, he kind of helped me out and explained, you know, some of the, the newer nuances about the game. And I took it in, and it worked out, you know. But I still honestly think Black Ops 2 is better. I just haven't gone back to it. Because going back to the PS3 means I have to start using L1 and R1, and I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. And if you see, like, uh, <laughs> most people on YouTube have montages how good they are. Not yeah. me. I do montage of how many times I died in a match. Like, I, <laughs> it's, I'm not that great at it. I think that's part of the reason. Call of Duty, like, Black Ops 2 is different, but Ghost, not even close. Like, I'm not, no, nah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm just, I'm yeah. just horrible. So Black Ops 2, you you are pretty good. We gotta get together and play one of these days, man. I'd rather do Black Ops 2 because Ghost, I just feel like it's so much going on. Like I just feel like I, I, like people doing the same thing. Like I'm not a person that likes to camp too much, so like I'm running around and stuff, and like there's people are sniping me left and right. I'm like, what the? And like supposedly they turn down the sniping, and like I did quick scope. I'm good at quick scoping, and that's why I do Black Ops 2. But it's harder to quick scope at uh, Ghost. It's, it seemed like they they patched it down or so like you can't do things with sniper like you used to do so like now like I'm complete garbage like <laughs> before I, I look good sometimes like the quick scopes but now like I can't even do that so <laughs> not good at all I'm trying to remember this is off the subject but I can't remember her name but the lady from uh, Naughty Dog who got oh, yeah, let yeah. go you guys know who I'm talking about she left yeah, I forgot her name though no she was forced out she didn't leave Oh, she, she, they they fired her. She was forced out by the the the, uh, the uh, I can't even think of the name of it. By the Last of Us writing uh, team, she was forced out. Wow. She did she did not leave. So uh, I even mentioned that yesterday in the video I did that she's done all the Uncharted games. She wrote all of them. She's a, an amazing talent, and she came up I guess against another team of talented people. And did they have more clout? Who knows? But for her to be able to be forced out, this had to be an ugly breakup. I can't wait for more information on this to surface because, you know, now we got this um, Last of Us movie coming out. Who knows what's going to happen with uh, the next Uncharted game. Sony has come out and said that her departure will not affect the release date of the next Uncharted game. So now I guess the writers of The Last of Us are stepping into her shoes and taking over that role for Nathan Drake. Hopefully the game is good, you know. I mean, it might be as good, it might be better, it might be worse, but I really want to know what happened. But she's been she's been absolutely quiet about it, other than the fact of letting people know that she was forced out by the other writing staff. Yeah, she didn't leave. She was forced. They hit yeah, her with a... That's, that's crazy, man. I didn't know she's, she's forced to leave. I thought she quit, but I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. I, I like the Uncharted games. I thought they were really fun. Uh, I, I like her writing style because the way she just went from like huge action piece to huge action piece and the, the creativity of what they were able to do, uh, you know, having the fight scenes on top of the moving trucks and pushing people off the cliff and having buildings like crumbling underneath you and having that all fit into a cohesive story was really impressive. Those games were fun. They were like literally like playing an Indiana Jones game and I loved them. Absolutely, I agree 100 percent with you there. Uh, did you ever try the uh, Golden Abyss on the Vita? Yeah, uh, it's not as good. It isn't as good, but that was the first Vita game I got. Mind blown! Couldn't believe a handheld game could do that. If you guys haven't tried it, check it out. What it's- company makes that again? I forgot who developed that. It wasn't the same. Yeah, it wasn't the same people. I can't remember either. 
It's um. They also did a uh, Kill Kills of uh, Mercenary, didn't they? No, I don't think it was the same company that did Killzone. Um, Ben Studios. Oh. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I just think like did you guys like um, Uncharted Three? I didn't like the the multiplayer. I think the multiplayer for Uncharted Two was really good, and then like the multiplayer for Uncharted Three just was not as good at all. Like the mechanics and everything just didn't seem right. So what? I hopefully they fix that for the next Uncharted because. Like Uncharted, it's multiplayer is fun. Like, it's really good. I like that stuff. I just I've said, never tried out the multiplayer. It's good. It's really I never fun. liked the shooting that much. It, it always felt kind of wonky to me. Is it fun in the in the multiplayer? Yeah, the multiplayer is fun because I, I like third person shooters. You know, like it's semi takes some aspects from like SOCOM, but like I think that's why. Like I used to be like a huge SOCOM fan. Yeah, I miss that series. And like that's that's why like that that third person shooters like to me it's like a little bit more fun than first person shooters even though first person shooters are more precise I just feel like you have you have more skill at third person shooter because you're not as precise you have to use the proper angles you can see people from like the wall like it's it's harder so yeah. it's <clears throat> excuse me guys I'm I'm getting over a bad sickness I was sick last week I had to take take off work and stuff my beard grew real long um, right around <laughs> you said uh. That you didn't like Uncharted's gunplay, but did you like The Last of Us gunplay? Uh, I thought it was okay. I it wasn't my favorite part about that game. I thought it, it for the most part, it was good. But sometimes it, you just get into these like wonky situations where what you wanted to do and what the game was allowing you to do were two different things. Mm. And like you'd be aiming at something, and you felt like that arrow should hit that guy right in the head, but for some reason it just wouldn't register as a hit. You know, things like that just. The the action was not that game's strong suit for me. It was good enough that I enjoyed doing it, but I thought like Tomb Raider, it was a similar style of play. I felt like I had much more freedom in Tomb Raider, and I felt like it was a much smoother experience. So while I like Last of Us better as a game, I thought the combat was much better in Tomb Raider. And, and, and the gunplay as well, as far as the arrows and stuff go? Yeah, yeah. I really love the uh, the overall mechanic of Tomb Raider. Kate, Kate played that game and beat it first, and I had to go second. So, yeah, yeah. awesome. I did like the how everybody looked like cockroaches in uh, Last of Us. Like you were running around with your guns on your back, and you looked like a little cockroach with his like kind of wings tucked in. I don't know. <laughs> did you I guys play it. the multiplayer for Last of Us? Do you like that or? I didn't check that out. I like that because like survival mechanics. It's not really like you're limited with certain weapons and stuff like that, and you have to like craft certain things together to build a new weapon and stuff like that. So it, it's different. It was definitely different. It's a lot harder, and it's not fast-paced. It's actually a slow-paced style of game, and it, you really, you're really hurting when you die because it takes you so long to, to get the weapons, and someone might take your weapons and stuff at the end of it. So, you know, that it's, it's pretty cool, though, if you ever play that. It's, it's definitely different. I've never seen anything like that before in a multiplayer, so... Okay, guys, something crazy is about to happen in two days. Brian Rabbit, you ready for this? Uh, I'm ready. Hold on, <laughs> you sound like okay, you're now ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, we know you've been going through withdrawal. For those who have not seen Titanfall withdrawal, oh, look yeah. at that shit right now. Anyway, uh, Brian Rabbit, my good friend, has been he's been jacked up, you know, scratching his neck. <laughs> you know, his hair grew all crazy, waiting for Titanfall. He, he just he fucked up. You got some Titanfall? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was one of the funniest things ever. Um, this game will be out in two days, and I think the world is going to roar, man. Uh, I really don't have really anything bad to say about it. I I have my my pre misconceptions of what I do and don't like, but until I actually have the controller in my hand and play, I'm not going to say I do or don't like the bots. I think the idea of it is lacking, but until I actually play alongside, you know human players and kill these bots and see how much I like it, I'm going to reserve my judgments. But uh, two more days, man. Yeah. You know, March 11th, and that's a day before I turn 71. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not that old. Guys. <laughs> Happy birthday to us. <laughs> I was all looking forward <laughs> no, to keep, it. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> 
my birthday is on the 15th, so I was all looking forward to, like, yeah, I'm going to have, like, a whole weekend where nobody can tell me to do shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's my fucking birthday. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting in front of a TV, playing Titanfall, getting served cake. <laughs> that is going to be my Man, weekend. <laughs> I'm going to steal your idea there, buddy. <laughs> Unfortunately, Shoot. we're uh, because of the wedding, we're going to see family. <laughs> so, no Titanfall next weekend. But I can't wait to get a hold of this thing. I can't. I saw a complete weapon list, or what they advertise as a complete weapon list. It looks really interesting. I liked a lot of the weapons that I saw in the beta. Uh, I can't wait to try the other Titans out. I just can't wait to get a hold of like the full game because I'll admit that toward the end of the beta. I was getting a little bored because I wanted to try out new weapons and new combinations of, you know, this equipment and that weapon and, you know, this ability with that uh, Titan. You know, that's a lot of the fun of these shooters to me is, you know, kind of building your perfect soldier and getting out there and kicking ass. So I can't wait to see what they've got in store for us. I can't wait to see what they do for DLC. I heard that the special edition of this game is $250. And it doesn't include the DLC. Nope. Doesn't include the. Um, <laughs> was it what? the premium package or whatever? The. Yeah, it's two hundred and fifty bucks. Well, what do you What do you get? Like a. You get a light up statue. Oh please! You better send me a picture of that shit. I mean, <laughs> two fifty. Two fifty. And no DLC. No DLC. The DLC only costs twenty five dollars, but still. It's wow. crazy, man. <laughs> now, have you heard anything about these uh, these monsters in the game, Brad Rabbit? No, I've heard like little rumors and little a little bit of speculation. I don't even know what to think about that yet. Well, he did say that. Um, I think it's Zampella. Yeah, he said that uh, the DLC that's going to be coming out for this game is going to be some free DLC and then some paid. But he said there's so many aspects as far as characters and enemies that they wanted to include in this game, but they did not have time to do. He said, so that'll be included in the future DLC, so maybe these giant monsters that'll fight the Titans will be released as DLC, because I know I've, I've, I've heard and seen a lot as far as speculation on yeah. these giant monsters. Like Pacific Rim style? Pacific Rim, yeah, that's yeah. what you know, we talked about two weeks ago. I forgot the name of the movie. But yeah, these Pacific Rim type monsters that you'll be able to fight with your Titan, I think that'll add a whole new dynamic you know, to feel like a giant badass fighting to get some giant monsters, man. Yeah, I was thinking about it, like, how cool would it be if you were just in the middle of a multiplayer match, and all of a sudden a bunch of these big-ass monsters drop in, and you have to, the whole game dynamic changes, you have to now team up with what was your enemy so that somebody survives this, like, monster attack. So, like, the uh. conditions for winning completely change. Like, you're not, you're no longer fighting, you know, that other team, or maybe, like... The monsters are player-controlled characters. How cool would that be? And they just drop in. I heard that the monsters are supposed to be, like, in a background in the beginning, and uh-huh. I think that's why. Like, I wasn't sure. I know they're not they're not doing anything right now. They're just in the background. Like, if you look at, like, certain pictures already, they already show that there are in the background. But, like, I guess later on, like you said, basically, they might add it in to the DLC. So... That's yeah, to be strange. Like, how do you guys think the servers are gonna hold up? That's that's what I'm worried about. I'm. Everyone says the launch is on the 11th. I, I have a feeling the launch is gonna be on the 13th because I'm, <laughs> I'm curious about the servers because everything is gonna be relying on the new and approved cloud. So, I'm curious. Like, what do you guys think about that? You mean the, the, strong. You, you mean uh, the cloud that'll increase the video game graphics on my console? Absolutely. That <laughs> Bullshit. Um. <laughs> You know, the 11th is going to be terrible. It's going to, I mean, come on. Everybody's going to be playing this game. I mean, unless Microsoft servers or dedicated servers, I should say, are that strong that it's able to withstand everybody on Xbox One playing this game at the same time because I'd say 95% of everybody with an Xbox One probably wants to play this game. You know, that's yeah. the reason why most of the people who got an Xbox One got it in the first place. So, you know, those servers are going to be, mm-hmm. you know, completely over overran with, you know, crazy tweens playing the game and Briar Rabbit. Yeah. The but beta the- was strong, though. I mean, the servers were up for the beta. There were a couple of issues, I think, here and there. But for the most part, I was able to find games, get into matches, and have a great time. And toward the end of that beta, it was an open beta. Anybody could download that game and play it. 
So that went smoothly. Hopefully. There's something that they didn't do in the beta, though, that a lot of people for PC was caps. They didn't, they didn't give the PC, like all those people, the beta keys. They only gave a certain amount. And I didn't the give thing, one, yeah. I yeah, the thing it. with the PC, it's on the same cloud. Is it, It's going to be this, they're using Microsoft's cloud. Uh-huh. So they didn't fully test it yet. So the people that are going to be getting it for PC are going to be on the same servers that they were not before. They only had a certain amount before. So that's why I'm saying mm. they, they kind of didn't fully test it with the amount. So that when people said, oh, there's 2 million people playing it, they, they didn't realize that a majority of them were Xbox One. They didn't use that many PC people. And the Xbox 360 is going to be getting it, I think, after yeah. launch, right? But two weeks. Yeah. Which, by the way, I think that's kind of fishy to me. I think that it's actually not bad. It's not a bad game, but they don't want people buying it for the 360. They want people buying it for Xbox One. I think you're probably right about that, and it could speak to how much server tra- traffic the Xbox 360 could create. Yeah. So, because that's where there's going to be the majority of people playing anyway, the 360. Yeah. So. yeah. I'm still kind of excited to see what the 360 version of this game looks like. Yeah. You know, I you, mean, you want I, it to be bad, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to make that video. You should see how shitty this game is. <laughs> Here, let me show you. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, if it's it's not going to live up to the Xbox One version. Um, but, you know, hopefully they can get it close. Look what they're doing with, with uh, Metal Gear Solid. You know, those games look incredibly close to the next gen. Of yeah. course, we got different infrastructure here because it's an online-only game. But yeah. uh, I might make a video, just one. Yeah, but <laughs> I think it will be even worse for Microsoft, though, if it is pretty good. I think th- I think Microsoft doesn't want it to be too too good either because if people see how good it is they won't get it on get, Xbox One they're not going to get Xbox One for it and I know there's a lot of people that are going to be waiting to see how good Titanfall looks how it's running two weeks later to see should I just stay with my 360 and get the Titanfall for that or should I move up so there's going to be a lot of people are doing that so I, I think Microsoft does not want that to happen because they, if people find out that it looks almost the same or because no one, they still didn't say resolution or anything for that game. That's the first yeah, thing. No, they no. also, they we only know it's 60 frames per second. So once again, that whole resolution thing might be a factor again. I don't know. So. Oh, you know what else Microsoft released before Titanfall is the Xbox One chat adapter. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish my camera was working because I got the uh, Exo, the new Turtle Beach X07. And the XO4 here that I've been testing out, as well as this chat adapter, and I gotta say I love this little chat adapter. Hey, hey, Brian, Robert, why is it that that I cannot see your camera's down? Yeah, the ca- I don't know. Google Hangouts just doesn't want to show me. It's had enough well, of my ugly mug. No, the, the <laughs> rabbit looks. He looks kind of like you, so it's okay. All yeah. right, good. It's but yeah, I've been, I've been digging on this uh, chat adapter, man. You can it plugs right into the bottom of your controller. If you want to check it out, I made a video. Uh, where I reviewed the new Turtle Beach XL4, which is the Xbox One headset, and it comes with this chat adapter. And this thing is pretty cool. And just about anything will plug into this that into this thing, uh, even like your like Apple iPhone headset. And you have volume control and mute control and all sorts of little functionality out of this thing. I th- it sucks that it costs twenty five dollars that it didn't ship with the console, but now that it's finally here, I'm in love with it. It's the greatest little gadget. So it's it's pretty imperative for your your gaming experience for the Xbox One. Yeah, it should absolutely ship in the box. So okay, that that'll just make your Xbox One's only five twenty four ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, that's true. But I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you, I have a big problem with the uh, PlayStation Four. The PlayStation Four has the the audio input or output on the controller, which is great because you can plug in just about any headset onto the PlayStation Four controller. However. You can't control the volume out of that thing. <laughs> that is a pain in the neck. If you want to control the volume, you got to go into the system settings. You've got to exit your game, go into the system settings, and adjust it from there. Uh, with this little audio adapter that plugs into the bottom of the Xbox One controller, you can mute your microphone, you can control your uh, chat and game volume independently. So you can just lower your chat volume or just lower your game volume, and it works with any headset. It's great. Let's see. I had a question uh, about your video, Briar Rabbit. Yeah. Um, when you uh, record, when you did a mic test, right, for that yeah. headset, um, were, was that plugged into your PC 
or was it where you're going through the Xbox One and it's recording off that? Unfortunately, I was going to my iPhone. So I was actually plugged into my iPhone okay. recording my voice through that three and a half inch or three and a half millimeter adapter. Yeah, the, the one thing that I noticed, like, like for sound quality, 3.5 millimeter, like, headsets actually supposedly sound the best. But, like, the mic, when, you, when it's connected through USB, that actually sounds better because right now the problem with these uh, wireless controllers, since everything's plugged into that, even though it is a wired headset, yeah. it's actually still a wireless signal for the mic yeah. because it has to transmit wirelessly to the console. So yeah. that you still have that weird audio with the, the headset. Even yeah. though it's a wired headset, you still get that weird audio unless you connect it to a computer and not that's how you do a recording. That's how I do it. I don't record through the console. I record through the PC. With the Xbox One, I don't think there's a way to get chat audio into that without using this this adapter. Because mm-hmm. they don't they don't allow USB connections to carry audio. Yeah. Like the PlayStation does, mm-hmm. so I don't even I don't think that it's possible. Okay, yeah, that's what I was just wondering because like I think that's why like the the sound for the mic wasn't the best, like you said. Yeah, it's because it's transmitted through through that way. But yeah, like, it's wireless. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, like it seems like it seems pretty cool. I mean, that's the one thing Turtle Beach though they take forever to break in, and like they're never the most comfortable headsets, but yeah. they. They're dependable. Like you could use it, and it's it's okay. It's always gonna be pretty good, you know. Yeah, I thought the XO4 was exactly what you said. It's pretty good. Mm. It's a hundred dollars, oh. and it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the XO7, I'll have a review up in a couple of days, or maybe tomorrow, actually. How many gaming headsets do you have, Brian Robert? You got like a <laughs> shitload of these things, don't you? I like them. I I know. That's why I'm asking. How many do you have? It turns out that uh, some stores have a pretty good return policy, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, Walmart has the best return policy. You better not forget it. Now, you said you got an iPhone, huh? Well, guess what? The Sony Xperia Z1S is actually better than that phone. Okay. <laughs> you know, I always got to mess with you on Sony. So let me ask Connie a question. Miss Kuroi, uh, are you interested in playing um, Titanfall at all on your, your gaming PC? Not really. I'm not, a first, I'm not a first person shooter person. That reaction was priceless. Can someone record that? <laughs> we, we, can, we can watch it a thousand yeah. times. Now, um, but your Battlefield 4 footage is so good, though. Really? Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, starting off in a game, you're not going to be as good as you'd like to be, but the more you practice, you know what they teach us back in school? Practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. So if you keep practicing, you become a beast. Beast the gamer. <laughs> I guarantee you're a lot better than me. And, and <laughs> I can stand behind that. Yeah. I mean, this man, he prides himself on being the anti-first-person shooter. So but It's okay, though. Someone always has to come in last place. Just making sure you know that. That's why I'm there. Better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right, Brian Rabbit. <laughs> Somebody's also got to come in first, too, right, Brian Rabbit? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so are you, uh, what, what are some of the uh, PC games you're looking forward to playing right now, Miss Carroll? Um, I've just actually bought The Walking Dead, the first one, because I never actually got into it. I found that the you playing it on the PS3 is kind of a bit like iffy for me. So I just bought that the other day. I was going to do a Let's Play on it. I was looking forward to playing that. Just basically any game that isn't on a console, I was just going to try out when I get That money. game, the game Walking Dead is extremely fun. I, I love it. I'm playing the second season now. I hope you enjoy that. It's a, it's a marvelous, marvelous game. Yeah, I'm a bit <laughs> late on Bandwagon. Oh, uh, well, so. better late than never, you know? Yeah. When the Titanic pulled up on Ghostbusters, better late <laughs> than never. Um, hey, Briar Rabbit, and... Uh, not too dirty. Did you guys get a chance to play that? The Walking Dead? Yeah. yeah. I, I have, uh, if you guys look at my channel, I have all the bad choices in season one. I do <laughs> the worst, the bad choices to make it like an evil playthrough. And it's the way it, it builds up is pretty cool right now. Except if you saw the season two, episode two, like that, that's what I did on uh, Tuesday. I was really upset because there's a glitch at the end of the game. 
And I guess I can say the glitch. It's really not a big deal. Um, it's the yeah, fact that it's that glitch in the title too, right? Yeah. Your choices, yeah, your choices are not shown on the end of that season. So everything I did throughout the game, it doesn't compare me to everyone else, and that that really gets me upset because I like to show up, like show, like, oh, this is what I did. I'm like usually I pick like not what everyone else does, and that's why like you know it's always fun to see that. And the choice is a blank screen. It said like your choices, it's and it's, it's blank. That's wow. bullshit. You know, they they make cool games. Their narratives are really strong, but their text sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Those games, like, they lock up all the time. They're You're watching cutscenes, and they're, like, skipping around. Frame uh, rate skips, yeah. yeah. To me, it, it was like everyone, though. Everyone I saw that played it got the same glitch. So, like, to me, it's like, did none of their testers finish playing their own game? Yeah. Because how do you not see that the results don't show up? It, it's... 100% guarantee. Everyone I saw, there wasn't one person that had the results. And to me, like, I don't even know how you even patch that in because I don't know if they can even patch that in. Like, they, they might be able to fix it for the people that play once they patch it, but not for the people already play it. So, yeah. like, now I have, like, you don't get to see what my choices were and, like, what is compared to everyone else. And that's, like, half the fun of the game that you get yeah. to see. Like, that's why I, I do bad choices to show that, hey, it's a bad choice. It's something I wouldn't normally do in real life, you know? So, it's fun though. It's definitely a fun game though. Either I, way, I played through it and, and I saw all these frame rate skips and you know the jumps in animation that Brian Rabbit was talking about. And yeah, it irritated the hell out of me. But I was so engrossed in the story, I just couldn't stop. Yeah, you yeah, know? absolutely. I, it had me so sucked in. Um, but yeah, I have to agree totally with you. Not too early. The game is great, Connie. You're gonna love that game. And then you get to jump right on to the second season. So let us know what you think. You're going. You say you're gonna let's play it. Mm-hmm. Do that for sure. I'll check that out. Yeah. Have any have any of you guys uh, played this ridiculous game called Flappy Bird? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. What's your high I was told not to talk about it in public. It's kind of a private thing that I do in the privacy of my own room. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I don't know what's going on, okay? I, I just, this war going on in my house, okay? Everybody here has iOS and Android phones, and I've been going against my my youngest son, Brandon, and uh, I'm addicted to this damn game now, man. I can't stop playing it. It's like as soon as Beastly Thoughts is over, I'm going to be like, just going right back to it, but uh, I'm stuck on it, man. I can't stop playing it, and if anybody doesn't have this game, it's it's no longer available on Google Play. If you have an Android device, subscribe to my channel, send me a message, and I'll send it to you. It's By the way, simple. it's that simple. Just to let you know, though, that uh, that developer, though, even though he says that it wasn't because he was uh, had legal action, like people were saying that it had to be legal action from Nintendo. Nintendo was getting that ass. That's yeah. what it was. Because they Nintendo found out wasn't having that shit. He was making fifty thousand dollars a day. A yeah. day. <laughs> All That's off the Trump damn change. pipes. <laughs> All off the pipes. I want to. I want to try to hold in. Hold off as many days as possible. I'll be on the phone with Nintendo. Listen, we're going to shut it off tomorrow, okay? Yeah, how tomorrow. fast can the Vietnam court system really move here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my court date's tomorrow? Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> you got it, guys. I, 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 You know what? I want to change some shit so quick in that game because, you know, everybody loves it. You can't get it anymore unless you go through the Beastly Gamer channel. And, uh... But... I would have changed those pipes so quick, I would have turned them into something else. But the thing is, that's what sold people on it, because when you look at, like, the picture to download it, it shows the pipe, and it looks sort of like the fish from Super Mario Bros. So even though it doesn't say that that's what it is, you kind of clicked on it for that reason, and then you ended up downloading it because of that reason. So I thought Nintendo said that they're not pursuing legal action, though. They never came out and said anything. They just... uh, it was probably something in the background saying, like, take it down because you are stealing their likeness. Like, they could definitely win that easily. Those are the exact pipes. If you look at it, the dimension, everything, they literally did it for that reason. Like, they used the likeness on purpose. But the thing is, I'm sure this guy was just, like, a, a, a developer starting out, you know, and, like, you don't really pay attention. You don't think your game's going to be famous like that, you yeah. know? He You're just like, doing something to put it out yeah, there. Yeah, let me put it out here too. Yeah, and you didn't really think about the artwork like that, and then all of a sudden, once you get popular, then that's when people try to take the money away from you, so. 
Now, they probably could still get a huge majority of that money from him yeah. if, they, if they pursue it. But at this point, he's probably bought a new house, a PlayStation 4, and a new car. And a new name, too. Like, new name. <laughs> every t- I would have changed everything, man. Yeah. Well, have you seen that people have been selling their iPhones on eBay? Yeah, and I have the same seen that, yeah. Oh Flappy Bird included. And then people are buying it for, like, thousands, Dude, tens of thousands, yeah. a stupid amount. They got them on Craigslist here in Atlanta. I was at work. I showed a buddy of mine. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And I said, you know, this game on my phone here, I said, if you want to let me know, I'll send it to you. He was like, okay. I said, you know, this is a very popular game. I showed him on Craigslist, $1,500 phone with it, with Flappy Bird, 2000 on eBay. Everybody's selling this crap. I couldn't imagine being that kind of person to say, I got I got my income tax return. I'm about to ball out of control, baby. I'm about to get, I'm about to get that Flappy Bird, son. It doesn't happen like that. You know, but yeah, a lot of people are buying it, and people are putting it on there repeatedly for this ridiculous. Wait a minute, I got two newer phones that I don't use. Great idea, Connie. <laughs> I think I'm gonna, your holiday. I think I'm going to uh, visit eBay today. See, speaking of eBay, I had a question for you guys. You guys usually don't talk about this, but I know Beastly Gamer. You uh, said you like retro games and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, how did you feel, like, it was a couple of weeks ago with uh, the Nintendo World Championship card that it was on eBay um, that went for, it sold for $100,000? Yeah. Like, but, well, how it, do you it, feel about that? Because, like, if you see the cartridge itself, it's, it's terrible. The, it, it it's, the, it's a Mario one. That's the infamous Mario one that's it's ripped off, the label's ripped off, and it's written Mario on <laughs> it. And, like, people oh, still bought it for $100,000, which... I think before that it went as high as twenty thousand, but now it jumped up to a hundred thousand dollars. So like, like I feel like now this is gonna kill the whole market for retro community. Now everyone's trying to jack up the price for every Nintendo, Super Nintendo game. I don't know if you look at the prices now; they're unreal. You can't even get like a certain like I. That's why I do. I collect games all the time, retro games, and like you can't I, find anything. <laughs> I, have, I haven't checked the prices, but seriously, the Super Nintendo games are going up. Now, the, the reason that game sold for so much is because it actually had a chip in the front of the front of the cartridge that did something special. It wasn't just a regular game. Well, it was it, – no, the, the chip, like, proved that it was the, the World Championship card. Like, it's proven. Like, people know about the, the Mario one. There's, there's only, like, about, I think, 40 that exists left or whatever that people know about. That, and like that's what the chip's there for. The chip just proves that it's actual. It's a real thing. It's not an imitation one. But the problem is after that one, uh, after that one went up there for hundred thousand dollars, and all of a sudden now you have more of them that came up. They're popping up out of nowhere, and now you're gonna get all these scammers that are out there. They're just trying to make money, and they're 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 remaking carts <laughs> to make it look like the original. So when people go out there, they can't even tell if it's a real game or if it's just a game that looks like it, and they put the ROM chip inside of it. Oh, wow, that sucks. That's what people well, are doing. Well, listen, viewers, if any of you guys have got $20,000, I will sell you Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4 for Super Nintendo. <laughs> not, a, not a penny less. <laughs> yeah, man, it just... I didn't see how much that's going for on Eve anyway. <laughs> that's one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. I don't know. You find it out now? Yeah, I'm about to look right now. I'll see what it's... It's probably just a few bucks. I'll tell it you, is. I'd pay a lot of money for the original uh, Dreamcast version of Skies of Arcadia. How much would you pay? I don't know. I'd pay $20 or more. Come on. <laughs> if you had a box cart of that Castlevania game, it would be $274 is worth right now. Damn it. That's what's I going need... for it. Damn. I That's what I'm saying. And this one's brand new with the box, but the box like a little worn out, and it's missing the the um, the paper inside of it, and it's it's going for 174. So that's what I'm saying. Like people are jacking up the prices. It's insane. So basically, what you're telling me is, if I keep collecting these games, I can give up this YouTube shit. <laughs> you you could try your best, but like, <laughs> what's pretty much gonna happen? It's gonna crash eventually, and and no one's gonna trust buying it anymore. So that's what's going to happen eventually. No one's going to make any money because no one's going to buy it. So, Since, since you're uh, doing research right now, tell me what this is worth. 
Yeah. Oh, Sky's Arcadia for I love that Dreamcast, game. right? Yeah, I think I have that one. They remade that for the was it the Wii? Game GameCube. GameCube. With additional content too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's going for uh, forty-two dollars. If it's sealed copy, then buy a new for one hundred forty-nine dollars, uh, one hundred fifty. I paid more than that, and it was used. Damn it! How about Grandia two for the Dreamcast? That was what was one. it? Grandia two. All right, we're just now we're just doing internet search. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what this show is about, man. We're just can you look at, look up? While you're on the internet, can you look up what to do about an itchy rash? Uh... <laughs> All right, WebMD. Hold on one second. <laughs> now, look, this is something that's kind of rare. What is this worth? The Sega Saturn Japanese version of X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Is this an auction? <laughs> Welcome Here. back. Thank you, Saturn. Well, oh. he, he took over my old uh, persona. It's Black Man. What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> I feel like I'm new to the show again. <laughs> Are you? Wait, where's Cognate Player? What did you do with him? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it looks like I somebody's hear... robbing Cognate Player's house right now. Hell yeah. Yeah. What is going on? <laughs> is, it, is it because I'm white and it just all of a sudden got black here? Yeah, it's super black. <laughs> and that ain't no ski mask, brother. I uh, don't know. I think I got to find a light switch in here. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck was that? <laughs> He's jamming, man. I'm jamming over here, bro. I didn't mean to press the music while I was I don't on. Know. I've, I've been watching your guys' show. It seemed like ever since I left, it got boring, you know. Thank you for coming back, damn it. Dude, my Samsung, I have a Samsung, a little Samsung right for NES. That's like my rarest one I have. I have it like still boxed and everything. It's still going, man. They jacked up the price. Like People are trying to buy it now for $1,000. Thousand dollars, like thirteen hundred. Yeah. Like, when will you sell it? I'm not. I'm not selling. Never? I have two. I have two of them. The second one is, doesn't look too great, but the one it's in perfect condition. But, oh, but this is what you should do, especially with the one that's in perfect one. condition. This one. I I can check it to make sure that it's authentic. Just mail it over here. I'll take a look at it, and I'll sure. send you an email. Let you know if it's authentic. No problem. I'll definitely send you a nice digital picture. I'll, I'll send it to you, and you can verify with that nice clear. You know, 16 megapixels. I'll, I'll look for a 40 megapixel camera for you, just so you can tell. You know, damn <laughs> it! I'll take a picture of your picture of my 20 megapixel. <laughs> All right, I'm back. What, no what, one's robbing that, me now. Last one. Last one. What is this worth? The original Buster Groove. <laughs> wow. For wait, Buster Groove for what? PlayStation, the original, <clears throat> and it's complete. Buster Groove, no, it's a Buster Groove 2 on it. Buster Groove 1. Yeah. It's going for $35. If you had if you have Buster Groove 2, the best offer is $199 for that. I got that too. That's but more rare, is, I think. This is better, really? Well, that's what it says. It doesn't mean that's what people are actually going for. It. I see zero bids right now. So that doesn't mean that's what the person wants for it. Okay, well, just take out bids and write the word fools because I ain't paying two hundred dollars for shit. <laughs> yeah, I like I like to get my. No, drink it. Who's drinking what there, kind of player? I don't know. I think I drank some of Chuck Norris's piss there. Is Bar Rabbit still here, or is he gone? I'm still here. Oh, okay. I just saw. I'm him. still I'm standing. Bottom. You ain't standing. <laughs> <laughs> So are we all out of topics? Should we wrap it up for the night? No, we can just keep talking shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, damn, I get back in and everybody's like, oh, fuck off now. Yeah, he's back. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a question. Anyone going to play uh, Dark Souls 2? Anyone interested in that? Or? No. No? Too... I got Demon Souls and Dark Souls and... Um... Those games are, are pretty hard, and then like right when they were coming out, there was a whole bunch of other shit that came out that wasn't quite as hard. So I gave. I'm actually thinking about getting Titanfall though for PC. Oh. I'm literally thinking about it. I don't know. It looks kind of good, you know. Let's try it out for a little bit. I'll like uh, get rid of it, but I'm really thinking about it. I don't. Getting Titanfall. Hey, did we did did we talk about this Watch Dogs thing, guys? 
I don't think, I don't we, think did. we did. Even no. when I was in here, we didn't talk about it. We need to we need to discuss this. For people who don't know, Watch Dogs for the Play, PlayStation 4, they just released new footage of the game, and it looks <clears> like crap. So if you guys are watching this, check it out. The video's on GameSpot.com. I think IGN did it too. The, the, the graphics have been reduced. The game has gone through a massive reduction, and Ubisoft is under fire from the developers <laughs> because they, tr they, they obviously expanded the world and expanded the play mechanic, but at the same time, they've downgraded the graphics to the point where everybody was asking, was this a last-gen video game console that this footage yeah. is on? And then everybody found out it was actually the PS4 footage, meaning that the 2013 footage of the game and even the 2012 footage, which was the best footage ever, has all been basically thrown out at this point. So this is the big debacle. This is the big debacle that's going on right now. Who's going to try to eat what? What? Uh, uh, I, I don't want to be involved in the no. Anyway, this is going to be uh, obviously something that we need to watch closely, guys. That game is one of the, the main reasons that people like myself were really stoked about getting a next-gen console. When they showed that footage from Watch Dogs, I was like, this is this is something that the PS3 can't do. This is something that the Xbox 360 can't do. It's light years beyond that. And now it appears that they've taken so many steps back as far as the graphics of the game that it really does look like a PS3 game. Have you guys heard anything about this? Well, uh, I've seen, well, you know, I released a video not too long about, you know, that they actually gave us a release date and blah, blah, blah. Um, and the way I found out because I'm sub to Machinima on YouTube and actually seeing their trailer and their trailer looked decently fine to me. It actually looked just like the one we've seen before. Um, okay. Well, so I don't uh, know if uh, I'll have to go check out IGN to see if there is like two different trailers that release because the trailer the I'm seen, talking about came out the day before yesterday. Yeah, I think that's the one, the same one I seen, but it was through Machinima. So I don't know if Machinima had an old one. But it was one I haven't seen before, so I'll go check out IGN and see if it's basically the same one. Maybe I'm just blind as hell and I just can't tell the difference. Well, the thing um, is, uh, God, I wear glasses. when I saw it initially, I was just looking at the game, and it it hit me, you know, halfway through that it didn't look as pristine as the original footage that I did see. And so I well, pulled up the original footage, and then I pulled up the footage of the new gameplay, and it looked it's night and day contrast. You could easily tell. That one of them looks next gen and the other one doesn't. Unfortunately, they're both on next gen consoles. Yeah, but you're actually talking about the game trailer or the gameplay. Game. I'm talking about the gameplay. Okay, because you know I think, I, I I think, seen this for, I think not too nerdy is looking at it now. Yeah, I'm like I was looking at different things. Uh, they announced that uh, that supposedly Xbox One is 900p, 30 frames per second, and uh, PlayStation 4 is 1080p. 30 frames per second, which is common now. But uh, I'm in is, the middle of a game. I can't. It still up. doesn't look like true 1080p for either one of them. Like, well, clearly it's I'm not for Xbox One, but it didn't look right. And uh, and it's yeah, locked at 30 frames per second. So nope. I'm kind of curious, like, what's gonna happen? Wait, what happened? Oh, oh, hold on, man. What, what the hell is that? Who is that making that noise? If you want to buy a pizza for everybody, trade. What, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? What are you guys hearing? <laughs> hey, somebody somebody's talking about pizza. pizza. What the fuck is going on? Where does that come from? Somebody's buying pizza. Somebody's got to order some shit. <laughs> Somebody said, "Don't don't interrupt my game." What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Who is that? Oh my god! What the fuck? Is someone in on our network? Something's going on. Dude, and, and this is see the watchdogs are being hacked right now. What's going on? What the fuck is that? <laughs> see what just happened. I mean, because you were talking and then all of a sudden it drowned you out. I was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> I saw Connie start laughing. I was oh like, what the God. fuck's going on here? Yeah, I heard something about pizza. <laughs> now I'm like hungry, bro. I'm like <laughs> and the only person I can't see is Briar Rabbit. And I was like, that's not Briar Rabbit's voice. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the game, Honest. the game. Hopefully, they'll clean it out before it releases. But I mean, it says 1080p for PlayStation 4, uh -huh. but it's the 30 frames per second. That I know it's an open world game, but like, I don't even think it's gonna be a locked 30 frames per second. I, I'll be shocked if it's locked. It looked like it was a little jittery, so I thought they were trying to increase the frames per second. But if it's at 30 frames per second, 
and it looks jittery, that means that it's dropping even further below 30 frames per second. So I'm kind of <laughs> curious gonna a, what it's Yeah, it's going to be a disappointment. Like. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully they clean it up. They still have plenty of time to clean it up, like last-minute cleanup and stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to have GTA 5 coming, coming out soon. <laughs> say, say what now? I heard Brian Rabbit say something. Wait, that game's coming know. out in May, is that correct? Yeah, uh, May 27th. May yeah. 27, so that's not a whole lot of time. Well, just for the, the last patches, for the clean up, like to yeah. anything, anytime a game's jittering and stuff and like the way the resolution is, you could clean that up within like a month. That's not like the biggest thing. It's it's the st stability of the whole game is what you're worried about. But as long as it's stable, then you can slowly increase the resolution and clean it up little by little until but, it's unstable again, then you have to reduce it again. But the okay. thing is, though, the timing here is paramount. Their timing is so bad to release footage like this toward the end of the cycle, that's a terrible, terrible move because you brought so many people on board with the original footage. To release this footage is shoddy at best towards the end of the cycle, right when the game's getting ready to come out in two months. Cause they, they try to add functionality to it. To, for people, and like, th I think that's what screwed them up. And also, it says you see the multiplayer how it works, right? You could have people jump in your game while you're playing, yeah. And there's a there's a switch or whatever to turn it off, so you don't have that happen. And I think that functionality is gonna mess with like something with the game. You know what I mean? That that seems like it's gonna take up a lot of memory. I don't know how these next gen consoles are gonna be able to handle that. To be honest, with you. that's like really pushing the console right now. So we'll see, I guess. Yeah. We we shall see what happens. Now look, guys, that's all I got. Now that you know the that's all I got too. Oh, no, I they're, hear they're, it again. Don't you? They're, talk, they're yeah. talking again. Oh. <laughs> I think it's coming, Anthony. It's coming through your mic. You hear that shit? Yeah, I just lowered Anthony's mic and it, it goes away. That's why whenever you see me. Ready? It's gonna come back. There it is. I'm gonna turn it off. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but Cosmate player, you got a damn ghost in your house, and that motherfucker wants some pizza, son. It's that ghost headset, see? <laughs> got to call a new he wants ghost some headset. <laughs> wants some of this white chocolate right here? That's what he wanted. <laughs> God, I was bugging out. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> now, now I, I gotta you guys go are to fucking the... freaking me out. I got. You don't hear it, Cod? Ghostbusters and shit. Cosmate, you, you, are you telling me you don't hear it? No, I don't hear it. It was dead serious. Oh, hold on. What did it just say, guys? I'm, I'm, I'm touching his ass. What did it say? Mic check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, shit. How in the hell could something like that happen? That's so weird. Maybe oh, someone's DS yeah. give me something. Well, thanks for coming back and bringing so much glee to the show. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I'm Beastly Gamer. Uh, next yeah. week, actually, no, I think yeah. the week after, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that video for you to show you how to uh, use your GPU for the Sony Vegas Pro 12. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I'll teach you the advanced settings for that. So. That's good. What else you got coming up next week, Nick? Not too nerdy. All right, well, let's see. I'm going to do Dark Souls 2. Ah. So um, I'm probably going to die a lot. So you're definitely going to see some uh, rage quits live. Are you going to um, do a full let's play of that game? Like, yeah. blind? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll watch gonna, that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Twitch stream, too, next week. So that's something you guys can see, the Twitch stream. I mean, I wanted to get that on PC, but the problem is that game's going to come out to April for PC. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be stuck doing it for the, the PlayStation 3, but it's all good. But that's pretty much it. And then I have Warframe Wednesday, like always. I love that game, Warframe. It's just it's so much fun. And then uh, also uh, Don't Starve on Saturdays. And that's pretty much it. You know, pretty much keep it easy. This is the first week I actually did a video every single day last week. And that was kind of crazy. So I, I think I'm only going to have four videos or five videos next week. Yeah. So. Well... I'm, I'm not as on it as you were last week. I was sick as hell. I'm just getting over it today. But last night I did four videos. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it seems like these people only talk when we talk, guys. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Connie, what are you up to next week? Um, hopefully what I said I was going to do last week, I was going to try and do some Shemu. I got the emulator running finally on this PC, so I was going to record that. You talk to um, some sailors? 
Yeah. Hey, man, have you seen any sailors? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm finished Broken Age. Broken Age? Mm-hmm. Are you, that, is that game on DS? No, I think it's just on PC. PC? Are you, are you doing a Let's Play on Broken Age? I did a stream on it, and um, no one told me that they couldn't hear the game, so all they could hear was me. And it's basically mostly dialogue. Mm-hmm. So, and the music was really pretty, but no one heard it, and I didn't know till afterwards. So I, just... <laughs> I like so how playing. Twitch doesn't give us trouble for like letting the music play, and you know, I, I'm constantly getting uh, content ID matches from YouTube when I do let's plays, and that's really annoying. I like I like Twitch a lot better for that. I think I'm just gonna start doing all my let's plays on Twitch. Now you get you're getting those for what games, uh, Brian? Yeah. I, I get them for everything. It, the, I've got them for Thief. I've got them for Tomb Raider. Uh, it's usually let's plays. Anything else like COD? I you know I cut out the music on COD, so you don't get it. But it's always music related, and it's just like you know background music, and all of a sudden, bink, you get hit one out of like eight videos or something like that. It's crazy. I still haven't got one since like I cleaned up. I only had like about five, and then I cleaned it up, and that was it. Like, and I disputed them, and I they they just dropped it after I disputed it. Yeah. But like the thing is, you have to know who the company is that's that's doing it. Make sure they actually do own the music. And if it's for your music, if it's just for the video content, dispute anything. It doesn't hurt you to dispute it because you're allowed to dispute. It's when they deny you after the dispute, you can't appeal it because once you appeal it, then they're going to check it. And if they still turn you down, then you got a copyright strike. Yeah. And that's what you don't want because three strikes are out. So, like, right now you just want to make sure that you actually just keep it as, like, a content ID because they don't hurt you. And yeah. But, I mean, like, for music, I try to – for example, like with our music during credits, I, I mute the game or I don't even like show the credit. I skip that. Those yeah. are the ones that really you really get in trouble. But the ones in the game, like you usually don't get in trouble anymore. Like I've stopped getting content ID matches for those. Yeah, I only get them rarely, but when I do, it's kind of a it's annoying. Sometimes you can uh, you shared that trick with me. You <laughs> could actually take that audio right out, which yeah. is awesome. And usually that works, but sometimes it's just the option isn't available or it doesn't work properly. Uh, so what I end up doing is I basically either cut that section out of my Let's Play or I mute it and put a different different music on there or something. I don't know. I just wish YouTube... I, I guess it's not really YouTube's problem. It's Well, I guess just uh, if you want to do that, just go into settings from every game from now and just turn down the volume of the music in the game. Yeah. Just yeah. the music and leave like the sound effects and everything else out. Then it's so quiet, though. You have to grace us with your voice. Sing something, right? Sing something. Still playing thief. Still hiding behind this box. This guy's walking by. <laughs> He's got a torch. <laughs> and he saw. No, he didn't see me. <laughs> oh, you beastly! What are you up to this week? Uh, well, I made two uh two starts to a let's play. One for uh. Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, where you're playing as Dracula, yeah. or, Gabriel, or Gabriel Bellamont. It's from I didn't see that yet. I'm going to check that out. And uh, the other one's for South Park Stick of Truth, which is really funny. Um, I'm letting my subscribers vote on which one I'll do the Let's Play on, because I can't do them both at the same time. So whichever one they vote on, probably by Tuesday, I'll go ahead and do the Let's Play on it. I South, to get Park, it. South Park, South <laughs> Park. <laughs> 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 Bullshit! Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm getting more people saying South Park. I think I have one person or two people saying uh, Castlevania, so it'll probably be South Park. Kate's been playing it, too, so I kind of know what they expect. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing this week. And I'm playing Unit 13 on the uh, PS Vita. That's free with PlayStation Plus. Is that <laughs> just right now it is? Yeah. I haven't heard of that game. What is that game? It's a third-person shooter, uh-huh. kind of in, in the vein of SOCOM. Oh, really? Yeah, it came I out with the Vita. It was... It was one of the release games. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it's 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 not bad at all. I think you'd like it. It's it's not COD. Oh my God! No, it's not COD, but um, it's a third-person shooter. It's pretty fun. All right, I'll check it out. COD made. What are you up to this week? Chilling with ghosts. Chilling with ghosts. He's quiet. Yeah, I wanted. There he is. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh yeah, like I told you guys earlier in the show, I think I'm gonna start doing like. Uh, Trolling montages on Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, 
hopefully I'll probably get Titanfall for PC. Then I might start doing some PC gaming with my fiance's brother on the League of Legends. He's trying to get me into that whole get up right there. But yeah, basically I'm gonna try to like, start getting into uh, trolling and stuff like that. Maybe draw a bigger audience. Uh, maybe uh, do some trolling on old Omangle. Seen a lot of people do that. It seems pretty fun. Um, but yeah, that's basically what to look forward to on my channel is a lot of funny shit going down, people getting fucked with, and that's basically it. <laughs> okay, so now it's all coming together, God, man, because I know the last two episodes of Beastly Thoughts, you've been trolling us. So at least he's, he's, been, he's been practicing, guys. This is what this shit's been all about. Now it all makes sense. I got Taking you. notes. I got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me see if I can fuck with this guy. Yeah, all right. Gotcha. <laughs> I want to uh, mention Unreal Gamer. I know that we mentioned this before the uh, podcast started, but he made his first and second videos. I haven't seen if he made a third. Has anybody seen if he made a third? He has a third. Yeah. Yeah. He's he our pal, Marco. Everybody knows him. Uh, I got to say, I was super impressed, and I'm not getting around. His first video was like, whoa, that was his first video? <laughs> we were all talking about you before before the show started, so I just wanted to mention this to you while the show was going on. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Like, that one video, he had, like, an epic introduction to it. Yeah, it was great. I was like, oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> he changed his voice. And it was funny as hell, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Everybody's uh, making new intros, uh, channel introductions, and I'd like to tell you all, I'm loving them. Brian Rabbit, I saw yours today. I got I got that from Get Punked. Uh, Get Punked put that up on his channel. I was like, oh, that was a great moment, so I stole it from uh, my intro. Somebody just screamed zombies, and I don't think it was one of us. So it, <laughs> it, it, threw, it threw me off. But uh, Get Punked, if you made that, it's awesome. I really I, I thought it was great. I know, Connie, you made one too, showing your abstract ability. I think it was great. Uh, mm -hmm. Not too early. You said you're making one, right? And I think, no, no, Cod made. You said you're making one. And I don't know uh, if you you have one, don't you? Not to know. Yeah, I have like one for like different types, depending if it's unboxing or whatever. Ooh. I just see that, and I have like the, my basic outro that I always do, which you you know, not the. I think what they say like two percent of the people actually look at your outros by that time. Yeah, but you know, I still got it just in case you want to click on the videos I did throughout the week. I always put it on the end of my video. Awesome. You know, what's worse than that is I'm often putting outtakes after the outro. Which nobody sees. <laughs> <laughs> and those are pretty damn funny, though. Like, <laughs> I got a X07 review coming up real soon. I've got the Polk Audio headset on uh, order. I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of that thing. Polk Audio is a pretty well-known brand. I see that a lot of uh, uh, audiophile style uh, headphone makers are getting into the gaming headset kind of realm like Audio Technica and Sennheiser and others uh, that's making me really excited for what we're going to start seeing for for new headsets because I've been using my Astro A50s for quite a while now and they've kind of I think set the standard for the high end of gaming headsets but I'm ready for that bar to get raised up uh, well, I don't think it's going to be the X07s that do it but uh, that review will be sh coming shortly alright cool and we will be able to see you in that review, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't like my picture of my little rabbit? You know my fiance do that. <laughs> Wait, that's not what you really look like? Damn. Yeah. That's a little pink bunny on the nose. What's the big date again? The big date is going to be May 16th. <laughs> oh, no. May 16th, that's my anniversary. Is it really? You son of a gun. Now you're going to try to steal my stuff, man. That's messed up. <laughs> I don't believe it. Can't you hear this guy? <laughs> Damn it. I like <laughs> that. That's easy to remember keep, things. That's right. We can remind each other. <laughs> hey, man. Don't forget. <laughs> don't you have, that, don't you have <laughs> that thing coming up soon? That thing. You were, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, Brian Rabbit. That, man, that makes me feel like me and you are brothers, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank you. That, I can't wait. Wow, that's... What are the chances of that? Dad. <laughs> you had 364 other days, and you tried... You chose to be like the Beastly Gamer. It's the best one. I think we can all agree. <laughs> <Good shit. laughs> wow. That's awesome. 
All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for this show. Oh, Anybody right. else got any parting thoughts they want to uh, impart on the world? Yeah, I just want all the viewers to know that I am black. Westside. No, okay, go ahead. <laughs>